welcome back to the Ask Dr. Renee show here at blackdoctor.org. I hope that you guys have been enjoying Food Allergy Awareness Week 2023. And today, of course, is going to be another amazing story about somebody who has food allergies but has decided to do something really amazing about it. So I want you right now, though, housekeeping, you know we have to start it off. Please share the broadcast. Share, share, share. If you're watching this on LinkedIn, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Facebook, share the broadcast because I don't care who you are. You know somebody that has food allergies. If they've told you, great. And they might not have told you because they just were embarrassed or ashamed. So I want you to share this with them because this might be information that could be very helpful to them. Or it could be helpful to a parent whose child next week will be diagnosed with food allergies. So please, please, please share the broadcast. I greatly appreciate it. And I can't wait for you to hear this amazing story, this amazing young woman. She is just amazing. So we're going to start and open with her. Welcome to the show, Nubian. Thank you so much, Renee, for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. I'm so excited that you accepted the invitation. And I can't wait for everyone to learn more about you. So <laughs> tell me, first of all, so the Ask Dr. Renee show is, my show is really to motivate and inspire people to live the life you deserve. I brought it here to Black Doctor because I really was running out of time and couldn't book two shows <laughs> in the same every week. So that's why we're doing it here. But we're going to bring it together. It's going to be a mashup. So I want you to tell people what, this is how we always started. What is it you wanted to do when you were growing when you wanted to grow up? What did you think when you were little? When I was little, I thought I was going to be a teacher. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know if you want me to expound on that, but I can. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, I thought that was just going to be my path. And then I actually, um, went to college and changed my major about five times and finally <laughs> ended up with a uh, bachelor's degree in education. Okay. And when I was doing my student teaching, I realized that was not the profession for me. Like, <laughs> I love the kids and all, but I just did not want to be in the classroom all day. I just did not see myself there anymore. And so my mother thought I was crazy, but I told her, like, right at graduation, I'm going to go back and get my MBA because I cannot be a teacher. But now it's amazing because I'm actually teaching anyway right? In what, when what I do. So, um, yeah, but that's what I thought I was going to be. Well, that's cool. And I'm glad you went and got an MBA because clearly it also helped you in other things, right? Correct. So, <laughs> your food allergy journey, can you please tell people how did that start for you? Yeah, so um, when I was born, I had a severe milk allergy, but my parents didn't know. And back in the day, because it was a long time ago, um, they weren't checking for food allergies like they are now. So um, I was diagnosed or considered a failure to thrive baby. Like that's how they classified me. I wasn't gaining weight. Um, so they had to put me on Similac again in order to try to help me gain. And so um, I struggled for about 15 years. We didn't know what it was. Um, and, and, and with my mom, like in her, excuse me, with her mother's tradition, if the child's stomach hurted, you gave them warm milk. And so my mom <laughs> was giving me warm milk like every night because that, you know, she didn't know any better. Right. So I got, I, I, um, I got addicted to Pepto-Bismol at about the age of 10. That was like the only thing that would help me feel better every night after well, I had the milk. You say it coats the stomach. So. Yes, yes. So it was after the milk, then I had the Pepto-Bismol. So um, at around age 15, though, my mom, who was a, is a nurse, or she wasn't, she, she's retired. She, um, she kept seeing, you know, she kept noticing over the years I would throw up after I had milk or I would have some reaction to milk. Um, or cheese. We're from the dairy state. So, you know, we have the best <laughs> dairy, but again, it just didn't like me. And so um, she had me drink some milk and she timed it. And within like a few minutes, I responded. Now, again, my journey also was me constantly at the doctor's office. They were always checking my intestines, but they never checked me for food allergies. I had to do barium, x-rays, like, you know, poked and prodded, all that type of stuff. And I honestly started to feel like it was something wrong with me. So I had low self-esteem, right? Um, when it came to, again, my size, I was always really tiny um, and, you know, just couldn't understand what was what was wrong. So anyway, after she did that experiment, we realized it was milk. And now it's like, well, what does life look like? Because again, we're from the dairy state. 
we were heavy dairy eaters, right? Um, how do, now here's this kid that can't have that in a world where everybody else is. What are my alternatives? And again, what does life look like? And so we ventured off into the soy milks, the um, almond milks. And again, this was a while ago. So that stuff has come a long way because it was not- We're the good. same age. So I completely understand. And I've, I've explained that as well, <laughs> that things just looked a little different than they do today. Absolutely. We had to go far and wide to go find the soy milk. It was not at the regular grocery store. Yep. Yep. We had to go to the, the alternative stores. Right. And so even with that, you feel self-conscious about that too, because it's like, well, why do we have to go somewhere different for me? You know, I just want to get my stuff from the same place everybody else gets their stuff from. So anyway, um, after years of struggling with this, you know, and, and I think I went dessert wise because my siblings, if anybody else has siblings, you know how cruel siblings can be, even though they love you. But, um, you know, they would have brownie a la mode or creme brulee. And I got these orange slices. And it was like, I'm tired of eating fruit and y'all got all of that, you know? So um, without any culinary experience, I learned how to bake without top 14 allergens. It took me about five years before I got to the point where I felt like I wanted to put my name on it because initially it was horrible. <laughs> and the great thing, again, about siblings is that they'll be- They'll really tell you the honest. truth. Huh? I will tell you the truth. Oh my God. Brutally my sister, honest. I call her my executive producer and she will tell you the truth. She will, she'll watch this and she'll be watching and tell me that I keep moving my hair because it's getting yeah. on my nerves. <laughs> and also, <laughs> yes, yes, I, yes, yes, they're very brutally honest, but I mean, brutally. thankfully, so we don't come out looking crazy. That's right. That's right. Because if I can survive them, I can survive any, anything anyone else says, any type of critique. So um, anyway, so fast forward, we um, have been able to make seven products that we have in the marketplace for, um, for uh, customers. And um, I was going to say for retail, because we have some other ones for our food service. But, um, and they taste amazing. And again, I have a really bougie palate. And, you know, the texture thing was an issue, you know, too, like with a lot of those foods. And it was like, I felt really like it was a punishment eating a lot of those foods, you know, instead of like it being an enjoyable experience. And I really just wanted to feel normal. And so with my products, I feel normal again. And that's something that I hear from a lot of our customers, too. Like, you help us feel normal again. And that's that's just such a beautiful thing, a beautiful gift to give someone else. Definitely. Um, so... Uh, so you, I was going to show your website. So when did that happen? That picture that's on your site, when did that happen? That happened, ooh, what year is this? I'd say probably about maybe 10 years ago. Okay. I was at a restaurant and I'll say this now, I do not eat at restaurants anymore. Like you oh, cannot no. pay me to do that. I'm not doing it. So we were at a restaurant and I knew I couldn't have wheat because we learned later that I was also allergic to wheat. I knew I couldn't have wheat, so I was like, okay, fine. I'm at a restaurant, I'm just gonna get a salad. And at that time I wasn't vegan, so I was I got a um, seafood salad. And I'm eating it and I start to feel, um, the feeling that I get when I know I've been exposed to something, it feels like how you have water in the ears, like that feeling if you've gone swimming, oh, yeah. you know, the inflammation. Mm -hmm. So I felt the inflammation and I was like, uh-oh, was I just exposed to something? Maybe I shouldn't have sat in the restaurant, what happened? And it gradually turned into this where my throat started to close. Those are hives on my face. So I, I um, sent a message to my naturopath and I was like, okay, what is this? Is this a food response or what's happening? Because, oh my God. So she told me to go get an IgE test. We just wanted to see if it was food, right? And um, I couldn't actually come out the house for about two weeks because it was so painful. I couldn't see, like I had to wear sunglasses and my oh, eyes no. were like shut. Those are hives like right on the eyes, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, after two weeks, my IgE for a week was a three. If I would have went the day of, what would it have been that, you know? So um, I knew again, innately, I knew to stay away from it. But after this, I was like, I'm not touching anybody's hands. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm staying completely away from anybody um, that, that could have potentially had, you know, any type of allergen on their hand. And a lot of people don't understand, like when I go to a lot of conferences, everybody wants to shake hands and I'll fist bump you or like try to elbow you. And, and people will be like, well, why are you doing that? And it's like, I'm not trying to be rude, but if there's something on your hands that can affect me. So I, I've, I've tried to find ways to protect myself 
as I try to navigate, you know, just being outside of the house. But um, yeah, and the last time I ate at a restaurant, which is why I said I won't eat out anymore, I lost my hearing for two months. So I just, I just don't play with it anymore. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring my own food, like I, but I will not, I will not eat at a restaurant. Oh my God, that's awful. It is, and it's scary because oh, again, yeah, I've, had, I've had full hearing, you know, thank Your God. My whole life, yeah. My whole life, yeah. And to go, I mean, it felt like I was like completely deaf in this ear. I, if you snapped, I couldn't hear anything. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very, very, very careful. And and again, you know, I feel like if the restaurants would just would have just been transparent with me, if they would have let me see the ingredients that were in the food, I wouldn't have ordered whatever it was. Right. Because I'm asking questions. And if your servers don't know these answers, my life is in your hands. Exactly. You know? And so that's why we're so transparent. Like I yeah. I'm so open and honest about everything because if there's something you can't have, I'd rather you make that decision instead of you buying it from me you get sick and then you know what i mean like i i just would prefer to be completely transparent yeah um yeah that is that's crazy um so what are your allergies so i'm allergic to milk and wheat i don't respond very well to yeast i notice i break out from that as well so i stay away from that as well okay. and i'm vegan I even i know that's not an allergy but right. That just adds to the mix. And then people are like, well, what can you eat? And I'm like, oh, my God, so much. <laughs> There's like a whole nother world when you get outside of, you know, some of those things that we're traditionally told to eat or that we should be eating. Like there's a huge world's vast, you know, yeah. of foods that you can't eat. So my sister participates in a share. So she receives fresh produce every week from a far local farm. Mm. And they've introduced us to, well, me because my sister's a chef so she kind of knows a lot of these fruits and vegetables but they've introduced me to a bunch of vegetables that i had no idea existed but um they give you on their website they have recipes for whatever was in the box that week so oh. then if you don't have any clue how to prepare it then they give you some suggestions and stuff so it's really really cool but yeah. um and I really advise I really advise you to pay attention and see if there's something like that in your local area because um, I can tell you here in Chicago that there is a lot of things like that in the black neighborhoods, everyone, oh. where they're actually giving the food away for free, and the free food is fresh. It's produce that is not your typical, you know, carrots and broccoli. It's something different that you probably have never had before, but it's something you should try because it's healthy, it's good for you, and it'll help you be on this planet for a longer amount of time. And so um, so I highly recommend it. I am not vegan, as everyone knows. I'm not vegan, I'm not vegetarian, I do eat meat, but I do enjoy eating my vegetables with all of my, you know, with my meals <laughs> with to make sure meat. that I'm yes. getting what I'm supposed to get as far as nutrients, and it's really, an eye opener to be introduced to all these different vegetables that are growing fresh from the ground, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, but are different. They're not your run, run of the mill vegetables that you would go to. And honestly, um, you know, in our community, obviously there's a lot of health issues, especially with, with, um, hypertension and obesity. And I think that if we broaden our palates, I'm not saying everyone has to be vegan, but if you broaden <laughs> your palate, to incorporate some of these other vegetables, you may find something that tastes very similar to that starchy white potato or, you know, something else that you shouldn't have so much of. That's all I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah, saying. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so tell us, so you said food service and you said customer. So explain like, what is your business as far as like your business? You know, do you have only retail, but you have other stuff? What is, where is your stuff available? Tell us all that. Okay. Um, if I can, I'd like to go back even further and tell you go how ahead. we started, yep. if that's okay. Yep. So we started in the farmer's markets. We were actually baking, uh, doing baked goods. So I baked wedding cakes, smash cakes, stuff for schools, all that type you of did stuff. You did all the decorating too? Oh gosh. So another, in one of my past lives, um, I was a graphic designer. And so I just took, because when I first started, I, I really thought God was like joking with me when he told me he wanted me to do this. Like, I was like, I don't know how to bake at all. Like, what? You know? And, um, you know, I kept getting the message that he wanted me to do this. And so 
I was like, well, how do I go from being a graphic designer into a baker? Like, how do I do that? You know, and I had never designed a cake before ever. <laughs> and um, I just I just like listened to the stories of the persons that of the people that I was baking for. And that really like it was heart led design, you know, where I was able to create stuff for them. And I wanted it to be so beautiful because, you know, for us, I'm, I'm not sure about you, if you experienced this, but again, normally the dessert or the option for you is like a rice cake, which has like no personality or again, some fruit, you know, and they try to jazz it up with a little parsley or something on the plate. And it's like, really, you know, <laughs> it looks sad. Right. And so I wanted to make sure that the person that was getting this saw someone put a lot of love into what they were preparing for them. Um, and so um, we we did that for about three years. We, well, let me we just say it. one thing. My mom is actually a very good, she's a gourmet chef, period, but she's also a very good baker. She would make my birthday cakes, whatever cakes I wanted as far as the characters and stuff, because, you know, obviously little kids. But my yes. mom would make the cake, obviously, allergy friendly so that I could eat it. But yeah. she learned and she would make it like Care Bears was my thing one year. So she got the Care Bear mold and then she decorated this cake all beautifully. Yeah. So I had a cake that looked just like my sister's cake. It's just this one I can eat. Right. You right. Know? Yep. Um, but my mom did strawberry shortcake. She did. I mean, she she did all of the characters I love. Each year I had a wonderful, fabulous cake that I like, you know, that I was Thought it was beautiful, but it tasted great because it was foods that I could eat and it was delicious. Um, so, yeah, I understand what you're saying, because when you go to the restaurant and you say, well, I can't have that. So what usually I end up getting is a, a scoop of ice cream, <laughs> <laughs> which is OK, because I'm a plain Jane. So one scoop of vanilla ice cream works for me, but sure. it's just not as cute, as fancy as those other desserts, death by chocolate and all those other things. But, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'll say this, like, I really thought, you know, when I was um, when I told the community that I was in, I was in Memphis at the time, which is where I started the business. Um, and I told them, you know, I opened it up that we were going to start doing the baking and they came with some of the most creative ideas. I was like, how am I going to make this stuff? But I, I did, you know, I was able to figure it out. But I just looked at the cake as the same palette that I would design on, you know, like the graphic design. So I was able to make some really beautiful stuff for people. It, it was art, you know. And then um, COVID decided that it wanted to enter, <laughs> it, you know, into our world and it shifted everything. So, um, but I knew before COVID came, like we had so many people from out of state that were requesting our desserts. And because we don't use any preservatives, I knew they would not survive the mail. Right. And so it was like, how do I ship this stuff to people? They need it, you know. And um, I had initially started before when I first created the Pink Bakery with mixes. And when I got to Memphis, people were like, well, people need to know what it tastes like. And I'm like, oh, that makes sense, right? Let me start baking it, right? <laughs> In my head, I'm like, well, they'll just know. And they're like, no, right. they got to taste it. So I'm like, okay, cool. So anyway. So when COVID happened, I said, maybe I should go back to mixes. And so I like hightailed into, you know, I already had the relationship with the food lab and all that stuff, you know, for our nutritional facts and, you know, our water activity, all that type of stuff. And so um, I got all of them transferred over to mixes. And then we actually had to move. So we moved back home to Wisconsin. So we moved away from our base. And I'm like, oh, my God, you know, how, am I, how are we going to survive, you know? Luckily, Memphis was still buying from us, so that was amazing. But we got here, we built a manufacturing facility because the same issue that I had in Memphis was that there are no allergen-free community kitchens, right? So you have to take a risk. Like, and there are some businesses I know that actually make their products in facilities where they process the other allergens. Exactly. For, yeah. For someone and like they, me, and if you notice, um, if you read labels, anyone watching, if you read labels, you'll notice that often it will tell you this was manufactured in a facility that processed blah 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 blah. You know, whatever it is. Um, and I will say, and if for those that have watched me for a while, you know, we interviewed um, Denise. Uh, Woodard from Partake Foods, and she talked about how it was so important for her to manufacture her stuff in a place that did not manufacture any of the top nine. Um, Nicole Wilson from Everybody Eats, same thing. She manufactures here in Chicago, and she manufactures her stuff in a facility 
that does not manufacture any of the um, top 14 like you. So, yeah. Yeah. Because I'm someone with the allergies, I respond very negatively to cross contact and crossing. You and me both. Mm -hmm. That's why I made sure, you know, our, so our space was safe, you know, first of all, for myself, because I'm in here, you know, <laughs> but, but of course, secondly, you know, to make sure everybody was safe. And so, you know, again, I felt like at the time, how are we going to survive? How are we going to make it? Marquette University calls and they have an allergen free kitchen and they are looking for desserts. Okay, thanks, God. So that just aligned itself. Um, we are also, I cannot say the name of the Major League Baseball team because we do not have a, a marketing partnership with them, but I can allude to the Milwaukee baseball team that's here. Um, they also have our brownies that are on their um, sweet level catering menu. So we've been able to make some, some a lot of ground or lay a lot of foundational work with food service companies, um, which has been really great. And there's some other ones that are coming on board. We just can't share it yet because it's not official yet. Right. But, but we are definitely, you know, working on that. But, um, and then again, like to our, our retail customers, because we still wanted to make sure that you guys could still get the same amazing mixes that I was making for you. It's, I'm doing, I'm using the same thing, you know, it was just me doing it, but, um, you know, making sure that they would still be able to have access to something that, again, tastes good, was easy to make. This stuff is so easy because, I, again, I was not a baker. I didn't want to be in the kitchen all day. So all you add is like oil and water or like some apple cider vinegar, like very simple stuff, you know, um, but it tastes really good. And that was the big thing for me. And the textures are good. So, so you, um, so I know like Nicole Wilson worked for PepsiCo and uh uh, Denise worked for Coca-Cola. So you didn't have that experience. How did you get yourself into retail? Um, so I believe, <laughs> I call it the school of hard knocks. I have like a PhD in that, right? Because this is not my first business. Um, okay. But what I learned from each business that I had was hustle, right? And I, I take that and I, I will always bet my money on that that um you know the person that didn't have those those doors that may have opened for them you know earlier in their life through a, through a career or a job i had to learn how to get it by myself right and so um persistence networking um again like when, when people taste our stuff it's hard to say no to anything <laughs> that they try okay. because it tastes so good and so if they were looking for something um, if the category manager was looking for, you know, something like this and they taste it, it's like, okay, well, let's give it a try, you know? So our mixes are like in vegan cafes, um, in like some health food stores and then like, um, wellness clinics. Cause my focus again is trying to make sure that person who has the food allergy, like I'm going to try to put it where I think you might be, mm -hmm. or again, like vegan, you know, a vegan right. customer, try to put it where you might be because I really want them to be eaten. I don't want them to just sit there and be pretty on the shelf. I want you to actually eat it, you know? Gotcha. So, um, yeah, so that was, again, that, that hustle, again, that persistence, that, um, networking, networking is huge and I'm a great networker. Like I really, sometimes I sit back and think about some of the things, you know, I've been in Milwaukee less than three years and we've been very blessed with the type of opportunities that have been afforded to us. Awesome. So, um, I want, look, I want you to get into a whole foods and, um, <laughs> Trader Joe's and target and all of those places too, because they are now doing a really very good job. I must say of getting allergy friendly and vegan. Um, and I only reason why I pair the two together is because vegans obviously don't eat eggs and eggs are one of the top nine allergens allergies. Hello. I have egg allergy. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I think that um, that's why I always pair them. And there's so many options. I just was at Whole Foods today and Whole Foods has the lesser evil um, products and lesser evil products are completely vegan. Um, mm -hmm. They have a popcorn that I swear tastes exactly like the popcorn at the movies, but it is completely dairy free. <laughs> um, and, and actually their products are not, I'm not going to say they're good for you, but they're healthier than their counterparts that, you would right. be normally eating. So I, you know, it, I think that these are places that you definitely belong and if there is any way I can help you. We want to <laughs> you get to those places. Um, yes. yeah. I am always like, we got to get them out there, you know? Um, and so it's, it's just really cool that you 
saw the problem and was like, well, let me try this. And and then the pandemic made you pivot because I think the mixes are awesome. So can you tell us all of the mixes you have? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'll, I'll talk about our first one. So we, um, our first one is called Not So Plain Jane. It's our premium sugar cookie mix. Um, and this is a really good mix if you want to make sugar cookies or um, it's good as a pie crust. Um, I like to have like multifunctional type uses for, <laughs> you know, each one. I've made pop tarts with these. Um, again, just tarts, anything like that. All you add to this is oil and water and a little bit of vanilla bean or vanilla extract. This gives you 30 to 60 cookies, depending on your cookie cutter. You do not have to uh, chill the dough before you make it. You can just roll it out. That's what I'm saying. I made it really easy. <laughs> and um, what else was I going to say about that? Uh, 30 to 60 cookies. Don't have to roll it out. Um, I can't remember. But okay, just really easy to make. Okay. So that's the cookie. This is like our most famous product, which is um, the No Frowny Brownie. And I unfortunately, I know you can't have this one. I was going to send it, but I know I read that or researched you and saw that you can't have chocolate. But it is like our most famous product. It's the No Frowny Brownie. And this one actually gave me the hardest time when I was making, doing the research and development. It took me the longest um, because we went through, you know, should we try like black beans in there or should we try, you know, egg replacers? And I didn't really like how all that stuff felt, again, like texture wise and like the taste, you know? So um, my um, background is like in science. And so, I'm kind of really nerdy about that. So I just really like really figured out like the content of the egg, like the fat to water ratio and tried to figure out how to make, you know, replicate that. And, you know, again, for all our products, it was just it just worked. But anyway, um, this makes 15 full size brownies or one really big one. We don't judge either way. Um, <laughs> but if you do not have nut allergies, they're amazing with walnuts. So, or pecans. So, but these are like our, our number one product. Um, we made our own flour mix. It's called Gimme That. And I named it that because, you know, every time you're in the kitchen, I, I, I heard this all the time. It would always be like, well, gimme that. Gimme this. Gimme that. You know, so we named our flour Gimme That. Um, and this gives you seven full cups of flour. Um, and I on the back, I give you a gravy recipe because who doesn't like a good gravy? Not the nasty gravy, a good gravy. And then... Um, uh, my banana bread which is amazing as well and who doesn't love a good banana bread exactly exactly and then we have our white cake it's called the lauren and i named this after a woman that i met at saint jude um, when i was there as a vendor she um she came to me she was allergic to seven of the eight allergens and she okay. came and she was able to eat you know our products and she was getting married and she asked me if I had a white cake. And I said, no, because at the time I just had the chocolate cake, um, my cookie and my brownie. And she said, well, you have one year to make a white cake. <laughs> and I was like, OK, let me figure that out. So I named it after her because she was the inspiration for me making this cake. But this gives you 24 cupcakes. OK, there's two pouches in there. So there's 12 in each, 12, 12 cupcakes in each. And um, we did the two pouches because then that way you can decide how many you want to make. You know, if you don't want to make all Natural. 24, you don't have to. If you want to, you can. Or if you don't do cupcakes, you can do full size cakes. Um, so um, and with this, you add oil, water and some apple cider vinegar. So, again, really simple. And a vanilla bean or a vanilla extract, you know, however you want to flavor it. Um, and then our mama's favorite, which really is my mom's favorite. She uh, when we were doing all the testing, that was the one she loved the most. Um, and this has um, chocolate chips also. So it just really takes the chocolate level, you know, to a whole nother level. Again, I know I apologize. You can't eat this one either. Um, but this makes uh, 24 cupcakes, cupcakes as well. And all you add is oil and water to this too. So those are our, our mixes. And then we have a chocolate frosting and we have a white frosting. Um, and with those, you just add a little bit of salt or a little bit of water. That's it. Is that by you, the train? Yeah, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I was hoping no trains would come by today, but it's okay. during our time, I'm so sorry. We it's have right okay. on the train line. <laughs> I actually do too, but um, surprisingly, we don't. I don't hear it. But um, but yeah, that is really cool. I mean, I really commend all of you for 
taking the time to create these things. And the one running thing I noticed is that you all were real particular about them tasting good, which I so appreciate because it's bad enough that you can't have certain things, but then for you to eat it and it tastes awful, it's like, Ugh. what a why. It's, it's, it's the worst. I have said this about a lot of brands when I've tasted them. Cause again, I've been tasting it for a long time. Right. And I've said, <laughs> Clearly, someone in their family does not have food allergies because they would have kept going, you know, <laughs> like they, they needed to keep going, like maybe four more times, you know, with research and development, because this is gross, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm I'm thankful again that we were able to create this and, and bring it to the world. And I'm just thankful and excited for all that's going to come for it, too. So, so are you thinking of expanding the line? Um, what is what's coming next? So we um, we do have some other products that, like I was I was saying, that we have in food service. I just haven't decided if I want to bring them over into the retail space yet. Okay. Um, so I just have to make a decision on that if we want to. But yeah, we we definitely have some other ones. And I think what's what's really amazing about me going through this experience learning how to bake without all those things is I can really make anything. Like if I taste it and I can like study it or not taste it, I'm sorry, smell it. Cause again, I can't taste a lot of right. that. So, um, <laughs> if I can smell it, you know, and I, I'll ask like, well, what does that taste like? You know, like what notes are you getting, you know? And then I learn how to try to re replicate that um, is really like my superpower. So I, like I've made red velvet, but I made it out of beets because we don't use, that's traditionally how red velvet's made anyway, um, is with beets. But we don't use any artificial colors or anything like that in anything okay. that we make either. So, um, but again, going going back to the basics on the origins of food and seeing before, again, all the dyes and stuff were created, what were they using, you know? Um, and again, trying to make it taste good. But, but, but with that one in particular, it's a very acidic type of batter, you know, to try to keep that red there. Um, so it's, it's really interesting, all the chemistry and science that goes into the baking. And I, again, I live for all that stuff. So, <laughs> wow. I, um, I just can put a little bug in your ear. Snickerdoodles, my absolute favorite cookie, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. <laughs> just a little bug, just a little bug. Um, we, we you, have I a. We have a cinnamon cake again, but I I just girl, don't know. Girl, wanna... you don't know how we feel about cinnamon, girl. Me and my sister haven't met a cinnamon item we don't like. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. Lesser right. Evil is going to pay me for this. They're going to have to. But Lesser Evil makes cinnamon sugar space balls, and they're like these little corn puffs oh. that are they're in avocado oil, so they're not even in a horrible oil. And when I tell you, and the cinnamon sugar, the sugar's coconut sugar. Mm. You can have, I think, 26 of these balls for one <laughs> serving. When I tell you that that is so amazing, I'm a Weight Watchers person. And so okay. um, I forgot how many points it is, but it's really not a whole lot of points. And it's like 120 or 140 calories. When I tell you, I found this bag at the store last week and took a picture and sent it to my sister. And she texted me back, now you're talking. We are cinnamon people. Yes. <laughs> you have spoke our language when you said cinnamon cake because yeah. I can just I can just only imagine. I'll tell you, we literally just went to the grocery store this past weekend and my sister bought some sort of cinnamon muffins that were mm -hmm. Meyer brand from their, you know, bakery. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon muffin. When I tell you we like cinnamon, we love cinnamon. We love cinnamon. <laughs> Okay, so well, maybe I can send it to you to try okay. it. And that's know. what I'm telling you, Snickerdoodle. Yeah. You know, Snickerdoodles, cinnamon and sugar. I because right. everyone thinks Snickerdoodles has something to do with Snickers. No, it doesn't. No, cinnamon no. and sugar. Yeah. My sister and I love cinnamon. We yeah, love cinnamon. Yeah. cinnamon can make anything taste great, is what we think. But we um, used to we used to make with that cinnamon cake. We used to make an apple cinnamon donut that we girl, sell at the farmers market, apples. and it it tastes just like apple pie. It was it was amazing. So again, so my sister, trying to we go to eat and she looks at the dessert menu first. <laughs> like if we're, you know, walking through, like if she comes to visit Chicago and we're going to go to a restaurant, she looks at the dessert menu first. If we're, um, she lived on the East Coast. So when we would go into New York City, she look at the dessert menu first and be yeah. like, do they have anything apple? Yeah. <laughs> I'd lie not to you. So you have spoke a whole language right now for her. I know she is cheesing right now because the girl, apples and cinnamon, 
done deal. Done oh, deal. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. Delicious. Yes. And there's a story I tell in my book. I went to, and I can't say the name because what I will not do is be sued. But um, I went to an ice cream place that I really had no business going to. And you probably can figure out where it was. And I had their apple pie ice cream that my sister had raved about. Told you that's a thing. Yeah. She raved about it. So I said, well, I have to try this. So we went in Times Square and got it. And it was delicious. Oh, it was so good. (laughs) So I look it up and I see that they have one in Chicago, not far from me. I was like, oh, this is great. So I go there. I pick it up and get it in the little to-go thing. Take it home, put it in the freezer. I was like, okay, when I wash my hair tonight, when I sit under the dryer, I'm going to eat this ice cream. Yes. Girl got myself all set up. (laughs) And the first thing I put in my mouth, just put that one spoon filled, touch my tongue, and I was done. I was like, darn it. Oh. So I immediately started having a react. You know, I have anaphylaxis, so my throat starts itching. My tongue was itching. I'm my throat's gonna start closing. It's just really fast too. So yeah. I quickly go and get some drugs, and I couldn't tell anyone for weeks because I was so embarrassed because I oh. knew that I probably had no business going in the first place. One, I'm only four eleven. I was probably tipping the scale around two hundred thirty pounds, so I had no business eating ice cream in the first place. <laughs> Secondly. Um, anybody knows what I'm talking about. When you go to that place, you can't go there unless you're the first customer of the day because they don't clean the slab in between. Uh, and uh. I stood there and witnessed them prepare the person's chocolate concoction with nuts right before I ordered mine. But uh. Nubian, and I don't have good sense sometimes. <laughs> and I live on the edge, as my mother says. And so I just took that risk on my life because, you know, I had it before and nothing right. happened. Oh, so I will never eat there again. And it's okay. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not a big deal. I can still enjoy ice cream. Thankfully, nothing's wrong with me. I can have ice cream, but I can't do it there because right. it's just too complex. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I, I told my sister and my mom like three weeks later, oh my, <laughs> my God. mother was like, cause you know, I, I'm single. So my mother's like, oh my God, you could have killed yourself. You could have died. Right. right. She goes, I go, basically. And she was, like, she was like, and you had no business eating ice cream anyway. I go, shut up. <laughs> you were only thinking about that cinnamon. Girl. That's all you were thinking about. I'm yes. telling, and then, you know, that apple pie, it had like crust in it too, which the crust is the best part. So when you said I can use that just so plain to make crust for pie, yeah. girl, I got all sorts of thoughts in my head. Yeah, but um, but yeah, I, I was like thinking about that crust and the cinnamon apples. They tasted so good. So yeah, sounds so, um, good. Yeah, I I know that that's something I can't do. Um, but, um right, right. Well, just not said. not that place. You can make it at right. home or again. Right, exactly, yep. exactly. Yeah, yep. yeah. So you know, you live and you learn. You know, I learn hard sometimes because. I'm just we, me. But <laughs> we all have though because we're out here living. Like we're right. just trying to navigate the world. Yeah. And it, we get caught up sometimes. Yeah. You know, whether so, it's- and I, I tried to support a friend. I went to Melting Pot and that was not for me. Um <laughs> and it, they were very great. I want to say kudos to Melting Pot. They understood the assignment. I explained and they gave me my own um fondue thing. They completely yeah. understood. My only problem was that. When I sat with my friends, when they were cooking their stuff, I was inhaling the, uh, the, fumes, the fumes and I'm allergic to seafood cooking. So uh, I didn't get sick there, but later that evening, it hit me and I was having issues. So, um, yeah, like I said, melting pot, kudos to you because they, they asked the questions and they understood when I told them this is what the problem is. I can't do this. That so they made sure there would be no cross contamination, and there was none. Nothing Good. I touched anything. It was just I forgot about the steam bath. Yeah, <laughs> you're so brave to go out there and try. Like I, I mean, because I, you know, I tell everyone, and I mean, you parents were probably the same way. My parents did not 
do anything different just because I had allergies. My mom, yes, she made some extra meals because if they had something I couldn't eat, then I had something to eat. But my mom did not, they never cleaned the house of my allergens. My dad is from Antigua and I promise you in 1976 when I came along, the man wasn't all of a sudden going to stop eating seafood because the doctors told them at two months that Renee can't have it. Mm, okay. And I can't smell it cooking. So if you thought that my mother was not all of a sudden not going to cook it anymore, no, she cooked right. it. She figured out how. She cooked it outside. Yeah. She, you know, aired the house out before Renee got home or whatever, you know? Yeah. So I'm very accustomed to being around everything and people eating things I'm allergic to around me. I'm very accustomed to it. So that's why I can, I, you know, I can bend and fold and, you know, nowadays you can look up online and you can see what somebody's serving, you know, what's the menu. And I can either figure out I can eat this or I can figure out I can't eat anything. And right. I can either tell my friends, no, we can't go there because I can't eat anything. Or I can say, I just won't eat. It's not a big deal. I want to support you and I want to go, you know? Yeah. So it's, you know, so yeah. yeah. And I mean, okay. I... I go to, um, and it's in my book too. I go to a New Year's celebration. I would go every year, and they made, they had crab legs, but she knew I could not smell seafood cooking, so she was done well before me being there. Oh, and nice. um, I would go, and then I'd be like this, <laughs> <laughs> right? And it was funny because they have a landline, and somebody would call, and they need you to pass the phone, and I'd remind them. Mm -mm. You just right. touched that phone, so you have to get yep. up to somebody else. And yep. yeah, so and they understood. And I'm knock on wood, I've never gotten sick there. Yeah, good. Thank yeah. God. The lady Thank of the God. house is a nurse, which of course helps. And yeah. one of her children is also a doctor as well. So, but still, I've never not never two of them actually never gotten sick. So three doctors in the house and and a couple nurses actually in the family. I've never gotten sick. I've never had to take any medications. But like I said, I was very cautious and I knew I can't touch you and because you've been eating those and, yep, you know, yep. <laughs> and my sister wanted to go to um, the crawfish boil in New Orleans. And so I had looked at the menu and they had chicken gumbo. So I was like, well, I can eat chicken gumbo. We'll be fine. So we went and girl, my sister was on such high alert. I don't know if she enjoyed her food. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, the waiter just touched such and such. Where's yep. the hand sanitizer? Wash your hands. Go to the bathroom. Wash your hands. Yeah. <laughs> She goes, don't touch this. Don't, don't. It was crazy. My mother goes, she wants you to ruin her vacation. <laughs> right. I, I have to say, I, I'm glad to hear your family sounds just like mine, just like my friends. Like, I think we really have to give like them a hand, you know, a round of yeah. applause because they they protect us so much and they care for us so much and they look out so much and they're just as a part of this experience as we are. Oh, definitely. You know? And um, it's good to hear again, you know, your family's like that too. Mine are like little, like pit bulls. <laughs> right. Yeah, because <laughs> you know? I will sit there and not say anything because I just don't feel like it today. Yep. And my sister will be like, um, excuse me, what is that fried in? And yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I'm th I'm thankful for that too because sometimes I don't have the emotional energy to try to explain. Like I just yeah, get tired I just, of like it. I don't feel like it. I don't want to yep. ask a million questions. Like yeah, I yep. went to dinner yesterday and I was telling my sister today and this is a restaurant I always go to. It just mm -hmm. in the pandemic obviously haven't been often. And I wanted crispy Brussels sprouts that I always order. And I was informed that they're in the same fryer as a fish. And I was like, this is new. But why would you want your Brussels sprouts to taste like fish? Right. At a Mexican restaurant. Help me oh. understand where this makes sense. Right. So my sister said that I need to write a letter because she goes, I think that the waitress had wrong information <laughs> because that just doesn't make sense. And it really doesn't because nowhere on the menu did it state that those Brussels sprouts were cooked in fish. In fish. But you know what? Let me say this. This, again, is why I don't eat out anymore. I went to a restaurant. I'm not going to say the name. It is a national chain. And I ordered a salad. And I broke out. And I'm like, how? Because it's just lettuce, broccoli. Like, I don't understand. So my mom goes back to this said restaurant, you know, a few weeks later. She orders the same salad I got. And she says she wants her salad or she wants her meal to be gluten free. And they said, well, your salad is not gluten free. And she said, what do you mean? It's salad. Again, same salad I got. Right. She said what they do is after they make their pasta for the day, they take the pasta water and blanch the vegetables 
with the pasta water. And I said, that's why I broke out. And I didn't understand why, but there's nowhere on the menu where it will tell you that they do that. So that could actually be a thing at that place. But I would, of course, confirm. But it was like, why do that? Y'all have all this money. You can make another pot of water. Like, you can boil another pot of water for these vegetables. It's crazy. It's crazy. It is crazy. And I mean, I um, I went to um, a chain, no, a national chain, too. And there's actually a picture in my book. Um, my face swole up the next day. And I don't, and I didn't know this all happened overnight. So I woke up the next morning and I felt a heaviness and didn't know what it was. And then I looked yeah. in the mirror and scared myself because I telling you everything from here down was just huge. Oh no. And I was like, oh my God. So I, I happened to be home that weekend with my parents and I showed my mom and she screamed. Oh my God. <laughs> she was what like, you do? And I was like, I didn't do anything. I just went to bed. I washed my makeup off and I go, you think the, the Neutrogena wipes did this? Right, she was right. Like, she goes, no. And I go, I didn't think so either. And it took her about 10 minutes and she goes, Renee, call the restaurant. I bet you it was nuts. And I was like, huh? Because mm -hmm. I had grilled food. I didn't even have anything fried. I had grilled vegetables and steak. Mm. And girl, they decided to change to soy oil. And soy is a part of the nut family. Don't ask me if it's a tree nut or peanut. I don't know. I just okay. know my allergist had me on soy milk and I, I wheezed for 10 years straight. Uh, and then she told us it was part of the soy family and stopped giving Renee soy milk and I didn't wheeze anymore. Oh my gosh. So oh my gosh. I... Told, I called and they told me that. And I said, oh my God, I used to go to this place all the time because there was one right by Michigan State. So we used to go all the time when they first had opened. And I said, I've never had a problem. They said, oh, we just made this switch. I said, okay, well, I can't eat there anymore. So then she just was insistent on giving me a gift card, but she didn't seem to hear the English that I was saying. I can no longer <laughs> eat here because right. I can't have French fries. I can't have fried chicken fingers. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't eat. What am I eat? Right, right, exactly. So, they she had still gave it to me. Like I this. ended up giving some, I fed somebody else with it, but I was like, are you crazy? Right, they had, they had you out here looking like Hitch. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, honestly, the way I looked, it looked like the Joker. Like, the way his, you know, his smile uh, sticked out like that, mine was stuck on his arm. Oh, my gosh. It was just awful. But, uh, uh, but yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, that whole switcheroo and not putting information is so critical. Like, so critical. Um, I will tell you, I did get sick at Wildfire, which is a very popular steakhouse. But Wildfire, they changed and they started putting all the information because they had a lot of the garnishes in there. They just didn't have this one. Sour mm -hmm. cream was in my steak soup and I can't have sour cream. Oh my God. And um, they, and I mean, when I tell you, I saw this dollop and I scooped it and threw it on the plate because I didn't want it. And I'm eating my soup and all of a sudden I'm like, something's wrong. Right. And so I, the waitress came and I go, what was that white dollop? And she goes, sour cream. And then I guess my facial expression, she goes, you're allergic. I go, mm-hmm. Uh, so she goes, what can I do? I was like, can you just keep filling my glass? Don't let it go empty. And hopefully I can make it through the main course. And then I can go find me some medication because I told you I'm a risk taker. So I don't care. I did not at the time carry any kind of epinephrine auto injector. I do now, but I okay. didn't then. So therefore, there was not one to shoot me with. I had my inhaler, which I knew was not going to save me if, yeah. if something was going to happen. But I was able to talk. So clearly I was breathing. So okay. I was like, I'm, and I made it through dinner and I immediately went to the Walgreens and got me some Benadryl. And okay. I okay. But oh. when I tell you, I was just like, so they, I took, you know, I ended up tweeting. That was like the high day of, hey day of Twitter. And I tweeted about it. And I tagged them and they called me. That was like Friday night. They called me Monday morning and they gave me a bunch of gift certificates. But they also was like, you know, they were really like, wait, wait what happened? Explain to us. And they changed and they started putting more information in there. And so kudos to Wildfire to yeah. you know, thwart that from happening to somebody else. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Because the um, incident with my face where it broke out like that, we... Um, we realized that the seafood salad that I actually ate was made from imitation crab meat. Oh which no! Is made, which is made from wheat starch. I had two scoops, 
and I didn't understand what was going on. So we told them, do you think they changed anything? No, but they offered me gift cards. And I'm sitting here just like you stuck. Like, did she not hear what I'm saying to her? Like, lady, <laughs> this almost took me out. You know, right. I'm like, come back. I'm not coming. Well, my back sister's again. whole thing was. Well, I'm glad it was just your face that was swollen because what if your throat closed while you were sleeping? There's like nothing you would have been able to do. You'd have been dead. You just would've never woke dead. up. Yep. Yep. So I was exactly. like, yeah, thank God. But um, and like I said, the woman didn't seem to catch what I'm trying to explain to you, ma'am. Ma'am. Right. <laughs> Hello. I was like, you don't understand. I'm done. I'm I'm good. Yep. I'm okay. Yep. That's just one place I won't be eating at. We just take that on, put it on the list. Yep. To add with the ice cream shop. There's just a couple <laughs> things I have to go to. You know, I was like, but yep. uh, but yeah, it's really um it's really great when one, the waitress asks immediately, are there any food allergies at the table? The waiter or waitress, that is awesome when they do that. And then it's really great when if they do make a mistake, they figure it out and they figure out how to fix it so it doesn't happen again. Right. That's all I'm at. Yeah. Just don't. And I, I don't think any of these places want to be sued, which is why I'm like, it would be who of you. This yeah. mistake happened to me. It could happen to the next person. Yep. Ten times worse. Because like I said, I never left any of these places in an ambulance. So yeah. therefore, it didn't, you know, it didn't get that bad. But it could be like really way worse for somebody else. Absolutely. I'll give you one more example mm -hmm. of um, another crazy restaurant experience. And you'll probably figure out which one I'm talking about because I won't say the name. But we walk in and they have the soft shell tortillas right there. And you can build as you as you go, right? You can either do a bowl or, again, create the like burrito. Mm -hmm. And we walk in and I tell them, because um, it's a new person that's standing there at the time. Normally, I know the manager, right? And I say, um, I'd like for this to be completely gluten-free. Can you get the vegetables in the back? Can you get the rice from the back, right? And the person is like, well, we don't have gluten here. And I'm like, oh, no, yes, you do. I'm looking right at it. It's the tortilla that's right there next to the rice. And she was like, that's not gluten. And I said, well, can I speak to your manager? And she was like, I am the manager. We left out of there so fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god like let's go my brother was like uh 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 no we're out of here <laughs> it's crazy it it's, is but, it's crazy but you know in this space um of allergies and as i've learned especially in the food allergy space there are a lot of adults that don't know what dairy is yes and so when you say gluten there's a lot of them that don't know what gluten is so you say i'm allergic to dairy they don't know, does that include eggs? Does it not include eggs? They don't know that cheese would be equivalent to dairy, not just milk, you know, right. and then cream cheese. And then, you know, all these, they don't know. And it's yeah. really been very interesting. Um, I just was advocating a Capitol Hill in DC last week. And one of the bills was ha educating the lunchroom staff for primary and secondary schools across the country because, the lunchroom staff doesn't even know dairy from gluten from, and they're feeding your children every day. Oh so it's really important. And then also it's amazing people that don't understand what cross-contamination is. Yes. Yes. They don't understand that even though they're not on my plate, if you fry them in the same fryer or you, you know what I mean? All of that is cross-contamination too. Just like with the blanched vegetable, all of that's cross-contamination. So these are things that they need to teach the lunchroom staff so that they don't accidentally harm a child. Yes. And it's unfortunate we have to get a bill passed for this to become something. But in its 2023 and all this time, you all never figured out that these people that are feeding children every day. And mind you, I was like the only kid in my elementary school with food allergies. Mm -hmm. Well, I say known food allergies because nobody else seemed to talk about they had them. But right. I was the only one. And so my dad packed our, my lunch every day. But I mean, how many kids now have food allergies? And it has not occurred to us right. that the lunchroom staff should be educated. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, I mean, what are the kids supposed to do? It's not like, you know, back in the farm days where you went home for lunch. Right. You know, mom and dad are at work. So it's like, come on. You know? That's right. That's right. Things it's have been, changed. 
<laughs> yeah, and I, I can remember too, plenty of times where I would tell someone, okay, I can't have dairy. They're like, well, then you can't have mayo. And I'm like, yes, that's I can. not dairy. Yeah, they're like, no, you cannot have mayo. And I'm like, but okay, you know what? It's also fine. many people that don't know mayo is made with eggs. And I'm like, so I can't have eggs. And they're like, you know, would you like, I can't have eggs. So. Can't have eggs. <laughs> Or, or this has happened too. Again, the reason why I don't go anymore. I order salad and I'll say no croutons. They put croutons anyway. And then they're like, oh, well, we'll just pick them off. No. no. Oh my gosh. The protein is still there. No. Right. <laughs> you know, exactly. So. Like, come on. Yeah. Uh -uh. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting journey. But I, I mean, you like me, you sound much like me. Like, I don't have any anxiety. I'm just like, it's just, to me, this is just my thing. Everyone has a thing. And this is the thing that I got. Um, yep. I think there's a whole lot worse things that there could be. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm grateful that this is all that I have to worry about is allergies and asthma. I got my health into order because diabetes runs in my family. And I said, what you're not going to do is take away any more foods from me. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm not going to get diabetes. Yeah. Good. So, um, so, you know, in moderation, I can have white rice and I can have, you know, these mm -hmm. things, but you're not going to say I can't have because I have diabetes. So I'm not going to have diabetes. So I, like I said, this is my thing. It's not a big deal. This is just the thing. Um, but I'm really excited that the country does recognize Food Allergy Awareness Week. And I know many states across the country are going teal. Teal is the color for food allergies. And so um, I, I would love for Chicago to be awesome if they did. But I know New York City went teal and their skyline was teal for a night. And um, several cities across the country have done it, which is really awesome to celebrate mm -hmm. Food Allergy Awareness Week. But thank you, Nubian, for sharing your story. And you guys, I'm going to put her website on the screen. Give me two seconds. Um, but I want you guys to please follow her online and please go to her website and support her um, business. You can buy the mixes from her site, correct? Yep. And we ship directly to the house. We've shipped yep. as far as Japan. So oh, awesome. Yeah. So there's her website. And then your um, Instagram, you're at Pink Bakery, right? The Pink Bakery DM. DM is for dessert mixes. Pink okay. Bakery DM. Mm -hmm. Pink Bakery DM. And I'll put that in the post too. I'll edit it. And so that is in there. But you guys, please, please, please support. We want to support our people that are doing these amazing things. And we want them to be able to grow their businesses so that they're sitting right next to Betty Crocker. Okay. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Okay. That's yes. So we want them to be on the shelves so that you don't have to necessarily, you don't have to go to her website. You can find them on the shelf, just like everything else. When you go to the grocery store, um, I have read just in the last four days, I couldn't tell you how many posts I've read in Facebook groups of moms who have no idea how to bake and are like, what cake mix do you think is safe? And you know, what do you use to some to replace the egg in the cake mix? And oh, showing pictures. Oh, my cake was a flop. All yep. of these things. But yep. I want you all to please support her. Uh, my sister and I, we've done some videos in the past where we did some food allergy friendly um, dishes. And so we did make a cake, but um, we made our cake. Our cake was from scratch. But maybe we can do a video and we can use your mix. Um, yeah. With just plain. Yeah. So maybe I'll we'll send do you that. the white cake and the white okay. frosting. Okay. And you guys can make that. Yeah. So we'll, um, and plus I want to try out the crust. We just had blueberry pie the other day. And so we could try out the crust and, you know, do that again. So, but yeah, there's, I have some ideas. So yeah, I want to make sure I show some more videos and please make sure you are following her as well as me. I've been posting lots of reels about allergies, about food allergies this week, but I post a lot about allergies and asthma on um, all my different um, channels because, of course, there's way too many people coming up with allergies and asthma. And there's a lot of people walking around that have no idea about both. Yep. And they, they're they suffering because they don't know that this is what the problem is. So <clears throat> my job is to educate, just like you're educating people too, educate people so that they understand this is what it is and this is who you should go see and this is what they can do for you because anybody who's walking around and can't breathe i'm sorry that's not acceptable and that you no. need to go to the doctor because yeah. totally there's way too many meds on the market now treatable treatable yeah. and then yeah. food allergy wise there are so many alternatives out there now compared yeah. to when we were growing up that 
there is no reason that your child should be sitting there with nothing to eat when everyone else is eating something. There's no Absolutely. reason because yep. there's way too many options out there on the market. And even if you don't know how to bake or cook anything, there's so many things that are already made or real quickly can be made so yep. that your child doesn't feel alone, which I should have my book in my hand, but I don't. And there's not one in this room. Nope. Um, no, Renee, you are allergic is my book on food allergies for kids. And in the book, it talks about Renee going to a birthday party and bringing her own cake and ice cream. Because at the time, I could not have um, cow's milk. So I had goat milk ice cream. I had an individual one my mom would send with me. And then my mom would make a cupcake for me. And that would be my cake and ice cream. So when everyone ate, I had something too. So Aww. these are things that, like I said, my mom's a baker and she is a cook and she's amazing. And I know not everyone can do it, but that's where Nubian's mixes come in. Yay. You only got to add two or three ingredients and you've got, boom, you got exactly yep. what you want. My yep. mother, like I said, she made her stuff from scratch, but you can always do that. Yeah. And yeah. your kids will love you for it. And, you know, little Johnny doesn't have to feel left out because they have something that tastes probably better than what better. was being served anyway. Yep. And better. <laughs> they, you know, right. And they, you know, they feel like they're a part of everything that's going on as well. So please, please, please support, support, support. And we will see you again next time. Thank you so much.